Hi guys, this is Ben with FCP. Today, we're working on a 96 Volvo 850 Turbo. We're going to be replacing the radiator. Let's get started. First step is to relieve the coolant pressure. Next, we're going to remove the splash shield. There's a bolt on each side. Next, on the driver's side of the radiator, you want to relieve the petcock to help drain the radiator fluid. Using a 7 millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver, loosen the lower radiator hose clamp. and remove the lower hose. Remove the two lower radiator bolts from the AC condenser. And remove the one on the other side as well. Next, remove the ECU coolant hose. Set that aside. And remove the upper radiator hose clamps. Next, remove the fresh air snorkel. Set that aside. Also remove the upper intercooler hose. Just loosen the throttle body connection and you can rotate this hose up out of the way. Next, we're going to remove all the hoses and connections that are attached to the radiator shroud. With the relays out of the way, you now have access to the upper intercooler hose clamp. Using 8mm and 10mm sockets, remove the bolts for the shroud. Now you can lift the shroud. Next, remove the clips for the transmission cooler lines. For the upper and lower. Make sure you have a catch pan beneath it to catch any fluid. Remove the old clips and discard them. 
always important to put new ones on. If you can't, you can put a zip tie around them upon reinstallation to keep them shut. You can cap off the lower port or stuff it with the rag to prevent any more drips. Next, remove the retaining clips from the oil cooler side as well. As well as the lower clip. And cap it to prevent spillage. With the radiator sandwich supported with the jack, you're free to remove the two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the stack together to the frame of the car. And there's one on the other side as well. Remove the rest of the snorkel if you haven't already. Now that the radiator sandwich is unbolted from the car, that allows you to tilt everything forward and you can gain more access to the bolts. And then remove the other two that are on the driver's side. Once the top bolt is removed, you can lower the AC condenser down and gain access to that last fourth bolt. Once all the bolts are removed, you can lift the radiator out. Once the radiator is out, you need to pull the retaining clips off of the old one and transfer those to your new replacement unit. Also, remember to swap out the retaining clips on the edges of the old radiator. Reattach them to your new radiator. And drop the radiator down into the engine bay. With the radiator in the car, it's time to start tightening all the bolts. Remember, there are four on the top that hold the radiator sandwich together, two on the bottom, and the two main bolts that go to the body. And the other side. and the final body bolt. Attach the lower radiator hose and tighten the clamp. Next, slide the radiator shroud back over the radiator. and slide into the two clips at the bottom of the radiator. Replace the upper intercooler hose and coupler.
Tighten the hose clamps. As well as the throttle body hose clamp. Lightly lubricate all of your oil and transmission cooler hoses. Replace the retaining clips, making sure that the orientation is correct. This side is wider than the hose side. If you reverse that, it will not sit tightly in the radiator. Give it a firm push into the radiator. I always like to throw a zip tie around the clamp as an extra safety measure. Start reassembling the electric connectors for the relays for the fan. Replace the screws that hold the shroud to the radiator. As well as the upper shroud bolt. Start assembling the snorkel. Replace the upper thermostat holes. Replace the fresh air hose to the ECU box. Double check to make sure the petcock on the new radiator is tight. And replace the underbody splash shield. and replace the bolts on either side of the splash shield. We just finished installing the radiator on the Volvo. The last step we need to do is refill the coolant system. To do that, you need to add coolant to the reservoir. As the level drops down, keep adding fluid. Once it stops dropping, you need to recap the system and idle the car for a while. Let it get up to operating temperature, get all the air bubbles out. You'll notice that it will drop the level again. You need to refill right to the max level inside the reservoir, um, and that should be it. If you have any questions, please call FCP. Thanks for watching.